There's a new old drug for chronic myeloid leukemia, and it seems to work in patients with a mutation that does not respond to any of the approved therapies for this disease. This drug is called uh, omacitaxin, that's the name we give it today, but we've known it for a number of years as uh, homoharintonin. Uh, this is a drug that comes from an evergreen tree in China, and it's been used for many years in China, they still use it today, mostly in acute myeloid leukemia. And it's a drug that we used for many years uh, in CML as well. We, uh, we used it when patients were failing uh, interferon, when, when we used to treat patients with interferon as initial therapy. And, um, and uh, when patients uh, did not respond to interferon, the best thing we could do was homoharinsulin. We knew that it worked in some patients. Um, then, of course, imatinib and nilotinib and dasatinib, the they all came, and, and, and they're wonderful drugs, and, and that put aside uh, a drug such as homoharintonin. However, what's happened now is that we, we're starting to see a subset of patients who, uh, after they go through the sequence of these drugs, they don't respond to any of them or they lose a response. Uh, or a subset of patients with this particular mutation that you mentioned, that's uh, T315I, uh, which we know that is completely insensitive to any of these drugs that we have. So because of that, we said, well, let's go back to that drug that we knew had some activity. This is an ongoing study. What are your results so far? What we're showing now is that uh, in the chronic phase, which is where the results are the best, uh, we have over 80% of patients achieve a complete hematologic response. And that's very welcome. Some of these patients are actually very difficult to control. So just the fact that you can get their white cell count and their platelets back to normal and their basal phase to normalize, etc., it's very welcome. But even more exciting is the fact that we have 40%, uh, 41% of patients with a cytogenetic response. So the Philadelphia chromosome now starts to go away. Um, in, in about 27% of these patients, this is a, a major cytogenetic response, meaning 35% of the cells or less have the Philadelphia chromosome. And many of these, 18%, so almost one of every, every five patients treated, uh, have, we have a complete cytogenetic response now. So that is very encouraging. That's, that's a very good response rate in the difficult patient population. This study affects a small group of patients. Can you explain why it has big implications? And if you add them up, there's a few patients who have this problem, and there's a few patients who have another uncommon problem, and a few patients, it is a big problem. So I think it is a good thing that now we're starting to see an interest uh, in the investigators, uh, drug companies, uh, everybody's getting interested in, in looking at these small subsets. And no matter how small it is, we want to make sure that we have everything covered. And, and the other thing that has come with that is that we are starting to relook at some old drugs. Some of these drugs we may have discarded already. And part of that may have been that we were not, probably in the past, we did not have the ability to understand how they work how they don't work, uh, what characteristics of the patients may be significant to make it applicable to a subset but not to another. And now we're, we have better tools to understand all of these. So I think that we are seeing old drugs coming back, and this is a good example, and we probably should have more old drugs look back and say, hmm, remember that old drug that we looked? Uh, maybe we should go back because if I remember correctly, there were you know two or three patients who responded. Why don't we try to understand why those patients responded, and 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 should we then expand it to other patients that share those same characteristics? So I think this is this is this is exciting, uh, and it'll be covering small steps at a time, but those steps are very important. From the American Society of Hematology meeting in New Orleans, Jane McNeil for Global Medical News Network.